All right, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to Hashnode's Twitter space. I'm Abhimanyu. I lead content on the team, and I'm so excited to co-host this show today with our community manager, Elif Theria. Hi, Elif. Yeah, hi, I'm here. Hello, great, everyone. Great, great, great. Really looking forward to today's session. So this week, we're excited to welcome several members of our development team at Hashnode to get real nerdy and talk about everything that they've learned while building Neptune. That's our Markdown-based blog editor, which makes it a whole lot easier and faster to create compelling articles on our platform. So Neptune brings a range of powerful features, including a live preview of your formatting, the ability to embed rich content blocks in your post with just a keystroke, integration with Grammarly to help improve your writing, and AI writing assistance. And today, we are joined by Sandeep Panda, Alex Wanapool, Girish Patil, Lakshya Thakur, Preetham Paul, and Rajat Kapoor. I let them introduce themselves as we go through our questions, which uh, Eleftheria and I are both curious to hear about. And of course, uh, they'll be happy to answer questions from you in the audience too. So please tweet uh, them to us. We are at Hashnode on Twitter. And let's get started in just a second. All right. So <clears throat> I wanted to actually uh, start us off with a little icebreaker to help everyone get to know our dev team here. I'll call on each one of you one by one uh, to tell us what you do. And also, I would love to hear what is your favorite tool or technique that you've adopted in your uh, developer workflow over the last year? So, Sandeep, let's start with you. Hey, hey everyone. I'm Sandeep, uh, and I'm the co founder of Hashnode. I hope everyone can hear me. Um, so, I handle the tech at Hashnode and I'm the co-founder uh, and so nice to meet you all to talk about Neptune um, and regarding one one tool that I have adopted in the last year. Um, I think the most important one is probably uh, you, uh, it's not a really dev tool, uh, but something that is incredibly helpful these days is, uh, you know, the chat GPT and uh, that is, that is, uh, uh, that has boosted my productivity so much and uh, I, I i can it, you can see me uh, fiddling around with chat gpt every now and then so that's really cool um and and there is one one more tool that that i have uh, right now is github copilot that is that is super interesting all right alec the floor is yours all right hopefully everyone uh, can can hear me now uh, but yeah um alec work within the product team at Hashnode, and uh, yeah, not not being a developer, don't have any uh, specific tools in in that realm. But uh, as Sandeep mentioned, that uh, kind of keeping on top of of everything on from a productivity uh, aspect is is very important. So um, using uh, tools like To Doist just to keep track of everything uh, that that needs to be done and in progress items, so that nothing gets uh, nothing slips through the cracks, uh, is is something that I use quite quite regularly. Great, thanks, Alec. And let's move on to Girish. Hey, everyone. Uh, this is Girish Patil. I'm one of the software developers here at Hashnode. Uh, been here for some time and uh, contributing to almost every other area, trying to at least. Yeah. And uh, apart from that, the one of the uh, I have a couple of them, actually. So I've started using this app called Session since the beginning of this year and uh, kind of uh, in that Pomodoro category. So every 25 minutes or sometimes when I'm extremely focused, so it goes about one hour or so. Uh, it lets me remind to take a break and I'm actually sincerely following that. And also I keep a log of what all things I've been doing at that slot. Along with that, Raycast and Wrap, uh, Warp CLI, yeah, they have been a lot of help as well. So we have multiple repositories uh, when we usually deal with the day-to-day -day activities. So Warp CLI, I have everything configured and Raycast, there are lots of shortcuts configured. So as soon as I come in the morning and open and run any uh, few bits of commands, everything is set and ready for me. Fantastic. Thanks, Kirish. I did want to ask you to just repeat the name of the first uh, tool you're using uh, and where we could find it. Yeah, it's called Session. 
uh, if you can just google session pomodoro app uh, so you you can get that and the other one is warp cli and then raycast i think raycast many of the developers might be using it already right on thanks so much all right lakshya it's your turn yeah thanks everyone you uh, so hey folks uh, this is lakshya here and uh, i've been uh, working with hashnode for over a year now and as a software dev uh, i'm basically doing front end or back end and i'm excited about uh, talking about neptune today also this is my first space uh, to i guess represent hashnode as a speaker so um, getting to the uh, you, the favorite tool or technique i would say that i have not used most of the productive tools but uh, like like recently i think i've been kind of fiddling with chat gpt and the fun fact is probably i asked chat gpt for for some of this stuff today and i have shipped it to prod on hashnode the same thing <laughs> so you can see it's already creating waves uh, and uh, i think one of the techniques that i have uh, kind of seen uh, working good here is documenting more and more stuff or uh, decisions and that is how pro- uh, probably you know we have been able to move fast so that is something uh, you know it's good to do here in this remote culture yeah that's from me abhimanyu right on thanks so much lakshya and i'll also ask uh, rajat to give us uh, one of those yeah thanks abhimanyu hey everyone so i am rajat kapoor I... i am the product engineering lead at hashnode i on a day to day basis i'm just like fiddling around with the code and uh, just building new features for hashnode uh, and i've been here for like a very short time i'd say i just joined in april but in this like small time i got an opportunity to work all across the stack and a lot of features that you're seeing in hashnode i was actively involved in those uh, in terms of the best tool i think like uh, a lot of us have already mentioned chat gpt so i won't copy that but yeah that would have been my answer but i think one thing that we adopted recently at hashnode a couple of months back is a tool called linear for project tracking and we shifted from jira to linear and the um, uh, experience that we have there is amazing it's like so it's i think it's very very suitable for all team sizes and it makes your the job of task management creating tickets and everything very very easy back to you thank you thanks so much ajit and uh, we also have pritham pritham go ahead hey hey everyone uh, my name is pritham paul and i'm the product designer at hashnode building great stuff with great people so uh coming down to the great tools uh with the advent of ai there has been this mid journey and dolly so i have been using mid journey and dolly to quickly uh ideate on stuff which i used earlier used to do on pen and paper as to slap down all the ideas that is to you know come to my mind to just on paper but now with the help of mid journey it's just a matter of minutes where i get completely refined ideas which are, on which i can reiterate uh it's an amazing tool so that is where i would uh, point in point that mid journey has increased my speed in design and it's going to make all the designers life way easier now thank you wonderful thanks so much pritham and so that's our developer team and i'm now going to pass it on to uh, elefteria to kick off some of our more technical questions so go ahead elef yeah thank you and it was nice learning these tools as well cuz i was unfamiliar with all of this thank you So uh for the people who just joined us today we are speaking about Neptune our new editor and we are using Neptune for uh, the last few weeks and I wanted to ask Alec how has it been perceived by our audience and our writers so far Yeah of course so uh from our uh, private beta testers to long time users of Hashnode this response has been uh, very incredible it's been very positive Uh, everything from the live preview so no more switching back and forth to not having to worry about spelling or grammar with our grammarly integration it really seems to have been a big hit and i just want to highlight some of the the things that we've been hearing from our users so far things like the experience is smooth uh, it's cut down the time to publish significantly uh, the best part is the grammarly suggestions uh, neptune um was the pushing point for me after i tried uh that i just had to move to hashnode from my previous blogging platform and my personal favorite uh using neptune is like using a rocket on our way to mars uh, everything feels very light and seamless and also just on the the data side of things in the limited beta for neptune that we had um 
we've seen more than 9 million words published through the new editor um, from more than 6,000 drafts in just under two weeks, which is not a lot of uh, time at all. And this is also all, all before we replaced the old editor with Neptune uh, as we did earlier today. So it really has been quite, quite incredible. Wonderful. And I'm now going to pass on uh, the next question to, um, to Sandeep to kick it off. And then, of course, I'd love to hear from uh, everyone else who wants to chime in. So can you all, uh, Sandeep, can you walk us through your inspiration for the revamp of the blog editor into Neptune and what we're using today? What, like, you know, what did you want to accomplish and how did you know when to stop adding to uh, the, the dev spec? Sure. Yeah, so um, our thinking is that uh, Hashnode's editor is the gateway to all the awesomeness that Hashnode has to offer. Um, and uh, our previous editor was quite basic, and it supported uh, only raw markdown editing options. You had toolbars, but those were quite limited uh, in nature. So our users, they constantly complain that they have to switch between write and preview mode constantly to uh, to verify the draft. And uh, when they switch, the scroll position also would not uh, uh, preserved, right? So so uh, it was kind of tricky to constantly switch between these two modes and verify if everything works fine. Um, and uh, uh, there was al also a bigger pain point because uh, the undo and redo support was not working in the uh, in the previous one, and unfortunately, there was no standard way to support that in uh, in the previous version. Um, so, so we we were quite limited uh, in that, um, and uh, also a lot of our users gave us the feedback that the Grammarly su support was also quite limited. It was not working in the way it should should have been working. Um, so, uh, after getting to know all this feedback and talking to users and finally thinking that, hey, uh, this uh, writing experience is not optimal. And since this is the gateway to Hashnode, we wanted to upgrade it and we wanted to make it really easy for uh, content create creators, especially developers to to uh, to come to Hashnode to write about uh, uh, their articles, their docs and, and anything else, right? So so that, that was the, uh, t uh, the, the motivation behind building this new editor and at first our idea was that we'll not uh, endlessly uh, prolong the uh, development um, we would first look at the raw markdown editing option that we have and try to support all of those markdown shortcuts in the new editor and uh, and just maintain 100 percent backward compatibility so that if somebody is using the old editor and they copy paste the text in the new one everything should just work Right, so that was the uh, idea that that we support all of these things initially and launch it in public beta and get feedback and uh, address any of the concerns and then launch it for everybody before upgrading it further and add uh, and add newer items. So, so yeah, that was the uh, the motivation and uh, uh, basic rationale behind upgrading the editor. Nice, thanks so much, Sandy. Thank you. So I think that we can move on to our next question, which is um, given that the Hashnode platform is live and supports 2 million users right now, what were the first few things you needed to do in preparation for this project? Um, who wants to start? Reza, yeah? Uh, yeah, I can take this up. So I, I think like, like, like Sandeep mentioned, uh, our old editor was something that we built quite a few, you know, like a couple of years back. And we were identifying a lot of improvements that are present in the newer technologies and the newer libraries that are available at this time. So what we wanted to do was that we had to move around a lot of code in terms of engineering. Well, we had to move around a lot of code and get it in a state that it could be built in a way that we could ship incremental updates. And uh, we had to build it in a way that, uh, that the new editor was a module that could be plugged into the existing system so that we can launch for private beta very, very soon and get feedback from users. And just getting the existing code base in a state where we could uh, perform such a uh, an activity was was like a project in itself. And we like uh, Girish, me and Laksha, all three of us worked uh, tirelessly on that and getting our existing code base in a state 
so that we can build up on top of it and get all the functionality that we needed. And the idea that we had in mind, like in, in, that, that's more on the engineering front, but like on the, uh, as a concept, what we wanted to do was that Hashnode is a technical developer blogging, blogging platform. And a lot of users are very, very comfortable with Markdown. And that is why our old editor was working very well for those users. But what we wanted to do was to open our gates to users who are not very comfortable with Markdown. With our new editor, anyone can come on Hashnode. They get a very seamless writing experience, an experience which is very intuitive. So I think just thinking about those things and getting into product discussions and getting in, uh, the project into a state where we knew what to build and how to keep it more intuitive as well as minimalistic, as well as support the existing things, we had to do a lot of effort in that direction to make it all work. Yeah, that sounds super cool. Uh, Giri and Lakshya, do you want to add anything? Yeah, I can go next. <clears throat> and I also think, so since the earlier editor was uh, pretty straightforward, there were no prompts uh, for feedback or to write uh, any additional rich rich content, basically. So we had to tag along, I mean, collaborate with the design team seamlessly to get that experience also and take some inspiration from other platforms as well. Because that was a big leap from nothing to having prompts and a different flow of uh, adding so that was supposed to be taken care of as well. We thought of lots of different approaches, uh, took inspiration from different platforms and the collaboration with the whole team that's there currently. It was a, yeah, that was one major responsibility as well. Yeah, I can add here as well. So uh, one thing which I think went good was we didn't uh, block ourselves on stuff that, you know, were probably unknowns to us. So uh, there were cases when we were thinking of how to support some legacy stuff. And in that case is... Uh, we delegated them uh, further and uh, we basically saw what we can do right now. And as we gained some knowledge over how to uh, go through APIs uh, and gain confidence, uh, we finally tackled them in the end wave. So I think that worked well for us. Yeah, that's a really good point. And like in the beginning stages of the project, we actually spent a, a week or so just trying out things in a very rapid way. So as to get a very... Uh, uh, MVP kind of product ready so that we knew the feasibility of the project and uh, to what extent we could take it. Thank you everyone for your answers. Uh, Girish, would you like to add anything? Yeah, and I'd just like to add one small thing. So most of these uh, newer, new generation editors don't support Markdown as a core syntax. Like you cannot just dump in Markdown and expect everything to work fine. So that was one of the, I think the most important thing that uh, kept us stalling initially at least. That was one of the biggest things that we were supposed to take care of initially. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so I see that some of you uh, have requested to talk, but please, if you have any questions, I would like to encourage you to leave a comment and we will go through all the questions or at least as much as we can. And we will try to give you an answer, but please write it down so it's easier for us to see it and go ahead with it. So I will continue with another question that I'm actually pretty sure a lot of you are thinking right now. What is the stack of the new editor? Um, Razad, would you like to start? Yeah, sure. So uh, before I actually answer this question, there's like a great saying that we all, we all stand on the shoulders of giants. So I think a lot of the tech that we are using here is taught by open source technology. It's built by people who have been doing this for a much longer time than we have been. And uh, we, we will talk more about that. But like the core editor is built using a library called TipTap. It's again a very good open source project. It's very, uh, it's an editor library. It's a library that you can use to create editors. And it's done in a way that it's very, very extensible. So what we have done is that we have used TipTap in our code base and we have written extensions that are very, very specific to Hashnode and make the writing experience on Hashnode very well. Now, the problem with TipTap, or like I, I, I won't call it a problem, calling it a problem would be uh, wrong, but TipTap doesn't have native support for Markdown. They have some shortcuts for Markdown. And like Girish already mentioned, we, we uh, wanted to have uh, like power the Hashnode platform's writing experience by Markdown. So for doing those interconversions between the markdown that we have and that we want people to write, as well as to support the existing old editor and uh, people copying pasting from the old editor to the new editor, we used a few libraries for the conversion. And there are lots of options available there, but we uh, for like conversion from markdown to a format that TipTap understands, 
we went ahead with a library called markdown it it is again an open source project it's well maintained it's been around for a very long time and it is we compared around like six to seven libraries and it, it turned out to be the fastest so we used markdown it for uh, converting our markdown to a format that tiptap understands and from can uh, we we get the output of like the written thing from tiptap and to convert it back to markdown we use a library called turn down that is again a very uh, widely used open source library for these sort of conversions so this is like kind of the main stack or like the main libraries that went into creating neptune but again there are like numerous other tools that we use we used uh, a component library called radix ui which we again style using uh, like the hash node style guideline radix ui is again like i cannot uh, uh, praise them enough it's a library it's a component library mostly built for react and it gives you components which are very very accessible right out of the box and they have all the states configured you have just you just have to style it so we are using that quite a bit for our neptune editor and like lots of parts of it are powered by the uh, radix ui so yeah that's most of it but yeah girish and lakshya please feel free to add some uh, if i skip something yeah i uh, i think tailwind twin and a couple of others are also there lakshya do you remind them thing i mean remember yeah, anything yeah uh, i think like so so we like to use tailwind so tailwind is def- uh, definitely being used uh, around hash node and we have also used it here with radix ui and one more thing that i would like to highlight is that tiptap is uh, based off prose mirror right so uh, that alone gives us a lot of uh, extendability to create some work which probably tiptap hasn't done for us yet and that is good because uh, i think we have done some work uh, regarding how we deal with pasting markdown and how it should come live to users in the custom prose mirror extensions which tiptap easily provides us so uh, till tiptap has those things i think we'll be doing some heavy lifting in the prose mirror but uh, any time if tiptap comes with smarter ways we'll obviously look out for those so i think tiptap is uh, a good library to uh, you know really hook into the easiness of prose mirror yeah thank you lakshya and everyone for your answers um again i think that we learned some new uh, tools and libraries but i actually wanted to ask what was the process for selecting these libraries that we use for building neptune yeah so i can take this up again uh, so uh, i think that uh, if you look at the a uh, community of the libraries that are available there are like lots of options for doing all the things that we are doing so our first requirement was to look for an editor that supported markdown but we wanted to be able to find a very good robust option that had like a an active community and active maintenance so we tried out a lot of editors we tried out slate js we tried out something called meltdown there was an amazing project uh, by the devs at facebook called lexical i think it was facebook if uh, I, i might be wrong but i think it was built by some developers at facebook so we tried out lexical but we finally settled at tiptap because uh, we were able to see the things that we wanted to do a lot of those things were uh, very very possible with tiptap and that's why we went ahead with tiptap and in terms of like the other libraries that were specifically chosen to uh, power the neptune editor the markdown conversion libraries that i already mentioned we tried out around like 6 or 7 and there are a lot of interesting options available all of them have their uh, shortcomings and uh, as well as like uh, competencies but yeah we ended up choosing the ones that i mentioned markdown it and turn down for like the interconversions yeah, and uh, i would like to add that uh, tiptap has amazing docs and uh, i think uh, if you when you want to choose a particular library or framework uh, you always look at the docs uh and i think tiptap has one of the best docs it's it's very much complete um and uh, offers uh, lots of examples screencasts and uh, guides uh plus it's being actively developed or they also have a, a tiptap pro if, if you sponsor them they also have uh, a pro extensions for you uh so so yeah so so uh, tiptap simply takes all the boxes uh, beyond the ease of use it has uh, all the necessary ecosystem ready to help you get started i can add uh, few th- yeah i can add few things here so a uh, couple of years ago we were trying out uh, some project so there we had used this uh, editor called editor js so there 
although edit jays was very extremely extensible but we got to know some of the shortcomings there but tip tap gave a lot of things out of the box as well so probably that pushed us more towards tip tap again as sandeep mentioned docs are very better and it's way more mature and built on top of pros mirror which is like the legend in terms of the core editor functionalities yeah uh, there was some of the points there as well and i also think that uh, the fact that uh, tip tap is headless that's also a big advantage which means we can style it in any way we want it doesn't come with uh, any uh, assumptions about uh, the styling so that itself gives us a lot of options to customize the design look and feel to suit our own needs awesome we have a relative questions from the audience so i would like to ask that question it's coming from ais gupta and i'm sorry if i'm pronouncing your name wrong the question is what was the biggest problems you faced while integrating the various libraries all right i will again go ahead with this uh, i'll start with this and then i can pass on to the other engineers so i think like the one of the biggest challenges was to getting our code in a state or uh, our code in a state so that it can be uh, used with tip tap because we had a, a very legacy uh, editor not a very legacy editor uh, an editor that was working very well for us but it was old it was uh, we uh, we had to figure out a way to or uh, like figure out a library that fits in very well with our ecosystem or our way of building things so that was one of the issues and then i think the biggest issue that we faced was again something i i'm probably reiterating this again but the, that was the tip tap did not have native support for Uh, manipulating markdown so i think the uh, and the kind of things that we support inside of hashnode they are not available uh, natively as markdown so for example in your hashnode editor uh, in your hashnode articles you can insert widgets which are not a concept of markdown they are done in a way that we you can create reusable concept inside of hashnode it's not a very widely used feature but it's like used by still used by a lot of our users so just supporting that with tip tap and ensuring that compatibility with markdown that was slightly tricky the other thing that's like again native to hash node is like how how we should how we want to support the mentioning of hash node users so that is again so uh, something that is not natively present inside markdown but when we have a way of representing that markdown has a suggested way of representing user mentions so just figuring out those things maintaining compatibility with markdown developing those things in tip tap or those extensions in tip tap i think that was uh, one of the tricky parts uh, and at the same time keeping it like very very intuitive i think and the design did uh, uh, design team did an incredible job with that would uh, would anyone else like to add something in this answer okay oh yes please go ahead no no, no i'm good i'm good right okay So uh I have another question from the audience it's not very specific to Neptune but let's try to answer this question as well so the question is what's the attitude of building it from scratch versus using a library at hashnode who would like to go ahead with this one i i can start with, I, i can take this um so, so yeah so, so uh, when we build hashnode we we always try to optimize for speed and we want to deliver value to the end customers um so so it's always boils down to which one which route is the most uh, bang for the buck i would say right so for example uh, one example is is uh, our advanced analytics which is powered by umami so if we wanted we could probably build it from scratch the the advanced analytics but we quickly decided that we'll we'll use an open source uh, tool like umami to to power our advanced analytics sections so it 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 required a bit of a tinkering to uh, to get it to work in a in a multi tenant system like hashnode uh, but it saved us a lot of time we didn't have to build a lot of charts a lot of uh, functionalities um and it it all came out of the box so so in cases like this we we use we try to just use a library and optimize it and uh, enhance it further right and uh, in other cases for example like neptune um we try to 
retain a lot of control so that we can do a lot of advanced stuff. Um, and we we try to use um, a stable library or a, or a framework which powers uh, the base, right? We don't want to, uh, for example, uh, we chose TipTap, uh, which is powered by Prose Mirror. We didn't want to reinvent the wheel. We went ahead with something that already implements uh, all of the uh, 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 basic uh, blocks, building blocks for, for creating an editor. Uh, and from there, we tried to enhance it and uh, optimize it for our own needs. So, so, so yeah. So, I, I would say in all of these cases, uh, we always uh, try to use a tool uh, so that we don't have to reinvent the wheel. Uh, and and then our most of our efforts go to go towards optimizing that that particular tool or library to suit our own use case and deliver value to uh, our own uh, customers. So yeah. So I. I I hope that that uh, answers the question. Yeah, uh, I'd like to add some things here as well. So apart from using uh, already built up mature libraries as well, we did end up building our own complete embed system. So we did use uh, third party libraries or different companies to power our embeds initially, but there were always some shortcomings. Either they used to charge a bomb or uh, we couldn't customize it to completely to our extent the way that we need. So we ended up building a project called Web Embeds, which is open source. You can check it out on web, webembeds.com a couple of years ago. So that's like all the embeds on Hashnode everywhere is powered by Web Embeds itself. So that is built something built from scratch. But uh, obviously, you do end up using some of the other libraries, plugins here and there to power few things like Mark.js or Markdown 8 and stuff like that, Day.js and most of these common uh, libraries. And I think as engineers, we always tend to attack problems head on. And there's like a, a satisfaction when you're solving something uh, by yourself. But I think it's always a good advice to check for libraries that are existing, that are battle tested, and uh, and probably use them as a starting point. As long as these libraries are not holding you back in building what you want to build, I think it's always a good choice to use these as a starting point for your projects or whatever you're building. Yeah. Nice. Thank you all. I wanted to just uh, ping with a question which is more to do about the front end. <clears throat> and that is that um, for those of you who haven't yet used the Neptune editor, what you'll find when you check it out is that it features a pretty sparse interface with minimal visual elements taking up room on screen. And you know a lot of the functionality is hidden in the details, right? Uh, things like, for example, when you want to embed content blocks, uh, you just hit uh, the backslash key, and that brings up a little menu of everything that you can uh, embed, right? Whether that's an HTML snippet or a custom table, right? Or uh, a tweet or YouTube video, stuff like that. So maybe this is one for Preetam. I'd love to know about, you know, what was your thought process while uh, designing the, the new Neptune editor? Yeah, thank you, Ivan. Uh, so uh, I would like to start with the uh, thing that Sandeep mentioned here that our prime goal was to design for speed. So keeping that in mind, uh, when uh, someone comes to our blank canvas, uh, our, we wanted uh, 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 we where once they click on the slash command and they, they can reach their final output within seconds. So clean, minimal copy, simple com uh, simple direction, keeping all of those things mind, in mind, uh, that's, th those were the design decisions we, uh, we took. and. Uh, with apart from that, uh, the amazing team gave me so many good feedback. Uh, uh, I got one of the great uh, ideas of having those uh, filters on the top of my uh, of the slash command uh, from uh, from my team itself. It, it was not my idea, but yeah. So it's it's a teamwork makes a dream work. So I got so many important feedback from all of you guys uh, in my team. So like after that, utilizing those things and using my design ideas, uh, we came up with this beauty. And with that, it's since design is a you know constantly evolving thing. I'm still coming up with new ideas where we can refine the design, make things, make minor tweaks, changes, even making uh, simple uh, changes to the icons that can make huge differences in the user's user experience. So it's a con constantly evolving process, and I'm always at it. I will be always uh, uh, like alert and making the good design decisions, making the editor experience clean and refined. Every time, every every chance I get. So yeah, that was my ideology. That will be that will be my ideology continuing. Thank you. 
and i think there there's like uh, there there's a very uh, i think kudos to the design team for that but like the way our editor is right now when you open it you won't see any options but i think uh, figuring out when to surface the options in an intuitive way so that the user can find what they are looking for and like showing them the correct menu at correct times and like having the unified interface for inserting content i think that all adds adds up to the experience or just builds the experience that we are able to provide with net journey right on uh, and you know not to toot our own horn but uh, i just want to share a little bit uh, of you know how i've seen some things happen behind the scenes right which is that i love how the entire team is really receptive to feedback and how that uh, materializes is that you know any of us across the team we might notice something that can be improved or uh, doesn't behave just the way we might expect and you know it's lovely to see how you know that is at least taken into consideration whether it's by the developers or the design team right to see whether you know there's a solution or a way around that that enhances the uh, in, you know the experience for our users so i think that also plays into you know this uh, constant exercise of refining uh, the product and i'll pass back on to uh, lf for a couple more questions yeah thank you so although we did talk a bit about uh, difficulties i would like to ask if there were any other hard technical challenges of building neptune and i think that this is something our audience will be very interested to know about the hard technical parts i can start with this one mm-hmm. so we had uh, we were at this point where we wanted to integrate the mathjack support the whole latex math equation support in our editor so earlier in the previous editor it was straightforward you used to just use the syntax uh, and then just render it and it was pretty straightforward so now we had a different flow and a completely different editor so it was very tricky to get the magic working it literally took us about more than a week or so just to get few things rolling there along with we were the, definitely working on some minor fixes parallelly also but magic was one of the i think most time consuming things when we started implementing separate nodes uh, every other features that the old editor had so we uh, went with one approach tried it failed couple of approaches although the whole flow would work some or the other thing minor issues would be there here and there kudos to laksha and rajat we all used to pair program a lot like that is one of the biggest thing that we have done uh, throughout this i think we have also collaborated on uh, other migration before editor so we did the same thing we had we we call this something called dream team internally so we keep uh, doing this pair oh, program every once <laughs> <laughs> so yeah uh, we keep uh, pair programming on a lot a lot actually and you have no idea unless you pair program uh, to figure out the solutions and problem or different ideas as well and uh, that's how we actually got it working and uh, currently the, if you look at the internal implementation of the magic it's very tricky and uh, but to the users it is at least i think it works fine but internally we have it sorted very in a in a complicated but a good mess <laughs> what you called a good mess but yeah uh, that was one of the very trickiest part to get it working and i think rajat and laksha might have more things to add as well yeah i think uh, what girish is looking for is it was kind of an unconventional way to <laughs> build stuff in the tip tap world but yep, uh, yep. i think we yeah we went for that option because it delivered the user experience that we wanted so we didn't want to compromise on the user experience uh, there so there is no example of doing such stuff in tip tap uh, if if you go through the repos but we have gone for something different here and it's working well for us and yeah just just as an extension of that like technical issue so i think what we wanted to build was a busy way editor like uh, what you see is what you get so i think like doing that with the simpler content types like text or even tables are not, tables were not simple but like yeah for simpler content types like images or text it was pretty straightforward because when the user were inserting that content type or editing that there was a way for us to present that in the same way as it would appear on their published drafts but for things like math chats the editing experience or like the what what the user is typing that actually is not the exact thing that they would see in the blog post so when they are editing we wanted a way for them to insert regular text but in the published post uh, and in the editor itself while they were like typing it we wanted a way for them to see the preview of what that equation would be rendered as 
So I think whenever we encountered such widgets that had like a more complex editing experience or where the editing experience, we wanted to keep that visible, but the editing experience was slightly more complicated. I think those those were uh, the more interesting or challenging problems to work on. Right on. Thank you for that. I also wanted to kind of uh, bring our conversation around to uh, just team culture, right? So we at Hashnode, uh, we work with, uh, you know, as a remote and completely asynchronous team. And a lot of uh, the team members have been with us for under a year. And just for um, just for context, I've actually been with Hashnode for just a month. So, so much of our little universe here is new to me. So uh, to the entire team here, I would love to ask you, uh, you know, can you talk us through staying in step with each other, collaborating across functions, giving feedback, and staying sane through the process of building Neptune? How did you go about all of that uh, over the last few months? All right. So I can start on this one. Go so for I it. Think, uh, I think uh, the, the one thing that we have very uh, established at Hashnode, or like the one thing that I like the most about Hashnode is the culture. And I think what we have built uh, at Hashnode, I think I, I should not say we have been here for a very short time, but what already existed at Hashnode, and kudos to our uh, co-founders and the team members for that, is that we have like a very uh, async way of working and everyone respect everyone, e each other's time. The expectation is not that once you send a message, you get like a uh, reply immediately. People would reply in their own times. There are people who are work you are collaborating with who are working in very, very different time zones. And they could be in involved in any other thing. And so whenever they reply, that is fine. And that is very, very acceptable. And that's uh, that's, that's the perfect way to work in an async culture. So I think uh, we were already accustomed to working in that way just because Hashnode culture supported that. And I think that, that, made, it, that made things quite a bit easy for us to uh, work in a remote async team where we had to collaborate on a daily basis. But that's it. Uh, we also adopted a few more things. So I think when once we started work on this, the uh, the first thing that we did was that we created a page where we were dumping our ideas and putting down all we like the most ideal, like striving towards the most ideal thing that we wanted to build, and then assess the technical feasibility of it. And once we started writing those things down, we uh, we were like able to refine a lot of those things. So I think the best way to work in remote async uh, and async teams in an async way is to write down a lot of things, have your communication done and written, uh, document all the decisions that you are taken, and also document all the constraints under which a decision was taken. Because in tech, whenever you take any decision, you six months down the line, you look at that decision and feel why you ever did that. But if you have the constraints that you were yeah, under which you took that decision, you can always go back and look at things and see whether those constraints are now not present. And then you can improve and build upon things. So I think that is one thing that we followed. And the other thing was to have uh, one thing that we want to do for all of our features is that we created a one-pager doc. So uh, w once we started building on it, we created a one-pager doc because we weren't sure how much team capacity or how many engineers we would need to work on this thing. So we created a one-pager doc in which we wrote all the essentials to onboard any team member onto this project. And I think that came up uh, as a very handy thing. And we are still maintaining it, still keeping it in a state so that anyone who joins the team can start working on it. And uh, I think Bhargav is on this call. He's like a very good example of that. So he joined Hashnode today. And since yesterday, he has uh, actually completed two tickets on the editor project. And he was onboarded using that editor doc and with help from Lakshya and me. But I think that uh, having something like that written down in a way that engineers can read it and start contributing on day zero is something that helped us a lot. Right on. Thanks so much for that, Rajit. I want to ask a question. I think uh, this is best directed to Sandeep uh, to walk us through the uh, integration of the AI assistance features, right? And just for those uh, you know who are out of the loop, uh, essentially we're currently testing in alpha uh, a bunch of AI powered features in Neptune. So what uh, the AI will be able to do is help you either generate an outline for an article that you have an idea for, or it can help you summarize your article that you've already written, whether you want to use that maybe for a tweet thread, or you want to just give people a TLDR quickly, or you want to use that you know, uh, as a preview in your email newsletter, whatever, right? And it can also 
potentially help you generate um, code blocks, right? At least to get get you started on that, and then of course you can build on it. So, I'd love to know, um, Sandeep, you know what what was surprising to you when you started working on integrating uh, the AI capabilities? Um, because for me, one thing that uh, that I thought was really interesting was that I think we spoke about it, uh, you know, internally, and then uh, maybe in just a day. Uh, you were able to whip up like a, at least a basic working prototype, right? Uh, I'd love to hear your experience uh, working on on this part. Yeah, sure. That's that's a really interesting question. Um, yeah, so uh, so both myself and my co-founder Fuzzel were both builders, and uh, I want to build things. I I want to keep building things whenever I get time. Um, and lately, I've been playing around with uh, GPT and similar AI tools uh, a lot. And I think there is a lot of potential uh, potential application of those um, AI tools inside Hashnode. Um, and when I started for started playing around with uh, OpenAI and similar tools, uh, I thought, how can how can we uh, utilize these tools inside Hashnode? Um, and what would the uh, use case look like? Um, and uh, when I started integrating things, uh, I I found more and more use cases, right? And uh, right now, uh, the AI assist is in alpha preview, and uh, we are gradually going to uh, roll roll it out to uh, several folks uh, real soon. Uh, but but the primary capabilities of the AI assistants is that uh, it can do varieties of things. For example, it can uh, rewrite your article title for better SEO or optimize it for the SEO. Um, and it can also generate an outline for your article. Um, and and it can also, for example, summarize your article and generate a TLDR for your uh, readers. Um, and apart from this text, uh, text generation things, it can also generate code blocks for you. Uh, for example, it, it can it can uh, pr- process really complex uh, prompts like uh, uh, write a React component uh, or, or maybe write a function React component which uh, makes an API call using fetch, right? So it can generate a boilerplate code for you uh, that you can extend and optimize for your uh, article. Um, and uh, I think that is great because we don't expect AI to generate uh, original and personalized stories anytime soon. Um, I think I think uh, what where AI really signs is, is that it can help speed up content creation uh, by automating boring parts. Right? It can it can it can optimize your article for better SEO. It can correct your English. Uh, it can it can uh, s- detect uh, spelling errors uh, and. Uh, uh, um, optimize the, the optimize the tone of your article um, and generate boilerplate code uh, that can be optimized so th- all of this uh, uh, help you uh, get past the boring boring stuff while while creating content and lets you focus on the meat the the uh, the actual value right so so uh, so which is why we are we are uh, so keen on uh, integrating AI assist uh, with our uh, Editor, um, and uh, it's currently in alpha preview, and we're we're optimizing it every day, uh, and we're get, just getting ready to open it up for scale, because if you have used OpenAI, you probably know that uh, it's heavily rate limited right now, uh, so so it's not unfortunately it's not ready for scale yet, uh, which is why we are evaluating all the options and trying to figure out what it takes to uh, launch this on a scale that that can be used by thousands of engineers. Uh, who are choosing Hashnode to create content. Well, thank you for this, Sandeep. It was really nice having this answer. So because we don't have a lot of time, I will try to be quick here. And I will pass to a question from the audience. It's coming from Vivek. The question is, are there any Hashnode-specific quirks in the markdown supported by Neptune? And before you answer this question, if there are any other questions from the audience, please write them below and we will try to answer them. If we don't do it right now in this uh, live tweet space, we will come back to your comments and our team will try to answer everything. Okay, now back to the question. I can take that up. Thanks for the question, Vivek. 
so uh per se there is no specific quirks quirks with respect to the markdown syntax that we support most of the common mark uh guides are supported apart from that there is nothing specific so you can on top of it we just have additional stuff for widgets and things so uh, embed syntax is widely supported in most of the uh markdown supported editors or platform so the just additional things that we have is for widgets and a uh, few bits here and there but majority you can work with markdown as it is there is no additional quirks i think i think just just one thing is that uh uh one one example is the uh image block right and we want to support uh, the image alignment for example left right or center so you could you could do that by providing an attribute to to uh image markdown shortcut so so we have smaller uh uh you know um changes to markdown uh like that but uh, but uh, yeah we don't we don't have a lot of markdown quirks or or uh, a difference in syntax yet yeah. you can bring markdown content from anywhere else and dump it and uh, yeah. it should be working fine yeah yeah or even, or even html if you have html with yeah. you you can just paste that and it it uh, it just works yeah nice that's super cool Okay, and I have one more question. I think Alex can take it. What sort of feedback are you looking for from our users? Yeah, sure. So we want we want to make the best editor out there, um, but we can only do that with the help from our users and the the hash code uh, hash code community uh, in large. And um, we really do want to be able to enable uh, everyone, specifically developers, to be able to blog at the speed of 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 their thought. Uh, and in order for us to to do this we we want to hear all of your experience with uh using neptune um and especially things like you know what further integrations would you like to see um what other items would you like to be added to the slash commands uh you know what's getting in your way of getting your thoughts down on the page as quickly as possible uh also how can we streamline the writing process even further end to end from like the initial idea uh, and draft review and editing to publishing Uh, and also following on from what Sandeep said earlier uh, you know what are you, you most excited about for how ai can help enhance um uh, the writing um that that you that you have as well um we do want to hear hear everything so please be honest and uh, please share uh, anything that that you feel might be helpful the good bad <laughs> and the ugly um and yeah feel free to reach out to myself on twitter or any of the other team members that are on the call to to share the uh your your experience we we're definitely looking forward to hearing from it and uh it will definitely also form a big part of the direction that we take and in the improvements that we make so you can be a direct have a direct impact on uh hashnode as well as as a as a user as well. yeah so we we really want to hear everything that that you have to say right on thank you alec uh i just wanted to remind people uh please feel free uh to share your feedback here on twitter you can always uh, also join our discord community uh and share any of your uh, queries or even ideas for features all of that uh in our discord channels uh where we uh you know actively engage with folks who use hashnode and uh write and publish their work i wanted to i think we're close to closing time so i wanted to just wrap up with one quick and short question for uh sandeep perhaps uh so sandeep you know neptune uh you know of course we've launched it now and you know it's widely available uh it is still a work in progress though so i'd love to know you know what's your vision and what else can people look forward to in the future sure yeah uh, that's a good good question um so we we are building the next generation content creation platform for developers um and we we're just getting started uh and uh, based on the tremendous love that we that we got from the community today we shipped uh this product for all the users as the default editor right and and i hope that we're going to get more feedback and iterate and improve the the product uh but but if you just ask me about some of the some of the key uh key big things big highlights in the upcoming few weeks i would say that expect to get lots of dev oriented features uh inside the editor for example uh, you can you can uh, in fact uh, at some point use the neptune editor to embed an, a real life api playground inside your uh, article right for your readers to play around with your api and change the 
parameters, add and up, add and modify the headers, and uh, play around with the APIs directly inside your article. Um, and that and the tab code view uh, automatically converting your code block into multiple languages. Uh, so, so all of those things are possible. And uh, beyond that, I would say a lot of AI assist and a lot of uh, AI related uh, stuff that helps you speed up content creation. Um, so, so these are some of the big things that are, uh, are that are on the plan roadmap. But, but yeah, I would say uh, we just we're just getting started, and we want to build the best possible uh, content creation platform for 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 uh, developers, and expect a lot of dev oriented features uh, in the upcoming few weeks. Fantastic! I'm really looking forward to seeing it all. And that was that was all uh, really enlightening, everyone. So thank you all to our. Uh, engineering and uh, design team for making the time and sharing what you've learned building Neptune over the last few months. And listeners, thank you all for joining us. If that's got you interested in what we're up to at Hashnode, please come check out our free blogging platform and our vibrant community of people in tech at Hashnode.com and start writing on Neptune right now. Stay tuned to Hashnode on Twitter, where we'll bring you more insightful conversations in the near future. See you next time. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye, everyone.